that's out there is how quick this track is. Television really has a hard time of bringing the speed out, but that shows you how much this track can bite. It's seriously fast through those uh, that sector, that whole sector. Once you start accelerating out of the uh, out of the hip and you're, you're close to flat, um, a little lift up over the hill, seriously high speed. You need all the track width possible, so you have to position your car perfectly on the uh, on the approach to turn nine. And uh, obviously, Fabian got the uh, got the advantage with the other cars tangled up and just held too tight at turn nine. And, and uh, um, basically, uh, yeah. Nothing can do talk about going fast we're going back in time but you're looking at some history some genuine history out on the circuit now the SAS Auto Parts F5000s out on the circuit you've been chomping at the bit to see these cars all weekend you're going to steer one of the cars later on today a whole list of cars from the 70s that ran in that great era of New Zealand motorsport are in the field uh, we've got a very famous name starting off the back of the field Tom Alexander got pole position in the march but today Kenny Smith, legendary Kenny Smith, about to start his 60th consecutive year in motorsport. He's going to come to the back of the field. We all know who he is. Yeah, I think he's pulled rank there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, bump Tom out for this one. But um, it's going to be exciting to see Kenny coming through the field and you know, just seeing these cars on track, seeing them live is absolutely amazing. This is some awesome cars, and uh, I think we're in for a real treat seeing these uh, on track. Unfortunately, they were caught up in the conditions yesterday when we had that real big downpour of rain. It was elected to sit this race out. These cars very expensive and well preserved, but those conditions probably a little bit too tough for them yesterday to go out in. And some incredible cars. There is Ken Smith. They're doing an extra formation lap here for the rolling start for this ca this category when they come around to the start of the race. The number 48, Lola T332 of Kenny Smith. Had the absolute pleasure of meeting him on Thursday for the first time. And much told me his life story in one hour it was incredible just some of the names he's mentored over the years and still loves his motorsport like it's the first day ever raced he's uh, he's, he's an amazing guy uh, i got to know kenny early on in my career uh, when i was about 12 years old on formula v and he's been a great help, help to me as he has been to lots of uh, lots of new zealand drivers over the years and you know he's uh, he's out there and he has a big goal at it too this is brett willis we're on board with right now he's your defending champion in the SAS Auto Parts Formula 5000 series here, which is starting the 16th year of racing right across New Zealand. I've pointed out all weekend long, Chris, that New Zealand, for a small island, was so much racing, so much rich history, not just with circuit racing, with dirt track racing as well. There's some big names that have come out of this region. We cannot wait for the rumble of these F5000s. They're loud. This is how we love motorsport. I just hope everybody gets through this entire 12 lap distance. Clark Proctor and Collins on the front row. Turn the volume up at home. It's about to get loud here at Pukekohe Park as we go back in time in race number one of the Formula 5000s here. That sound as they accelerate to turn one is unbelievable. They all jostle for position there. Kenny already up the inside into turn one. Actually look to the outside there as well in the background. He's already made up two spots through turn one. Guys just looking to obviously get some tire tip now as they build speed. On board with Brett Willis. Watch this car in practice and qualify. Watching the Taco right in the middle. It's not a genuine steering wheel from back in the days, but the Taco, all these are electric gauges. They're going to be as is. And that car is one of the best percentage you'll see. Well, cold Avon tyres down into turn number five. They'll take a couple of laps to come up to the temperature here, won't they? Certainly will. And, uh, Bit of a half spin there in the end. He, he uh, ended up on the grass, but managed to gather it up. Uh, definitely take a couple of laps, you know. One, one lap, such a big tyre. It's, uh, it's hard to generate the tyre temp. So uh, I think we'll see the, see, definitely see the speed build over the uh, first few laps. How's this for a shot? Like I said, the best presented car out there. Everything is polished. I saw with all the bodywork off on Thursday, immaculately prepared. Here we go, he's just a little, carried a little bit too much speed into that corner. As you mentioned, those tyres still cold, lost the rear, and just struggling to gather it up. Oh no, that's uh, that looks like Kenny Smith. Oh, Kenny. There's been a big crash. And that's down at turn number one. The Reds have come out. David Banks is also caught up in the Talon. So Ken Smith has found that wall on the left-hand side. I can see his head moving, and, and I saw David was okay as well. I can see Kenny's hopping out of the car now. His belts are undone. That's a good sign. You never want to see an accident, especially in these cars. They 
aren't quite as safe, obviously, as some of the more modern stuff. So um, I'm really pleased to see both those drivers hopping out. And to the great applause once again from this passionate New Zealand crowd, Ken Smith, that's the car that Tom Alexander qualified in when Ken's original car, the Red Lola T332, spun a bearing during qualifying. And that's not the way he wanted to kick off his 60th consecutive year of racing. 75-year-old just surveying what's happened to the car, but that's a lot of damage. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how, uh, how that all came about down there. Such a fast part of the track. And uh, again, there's a fairly large sprint and speed in these cars. Um, so, uh, so closing closing speeds obviously huge. There is Tom Alexander. Get tangled up somehow. So there he is at the back of this group. Did he go for a last minute dive down the inside? It's turned hard left into it. Man, that's big contact with two ton concrete blocks on the left hand side. Definitely a, definitely a failure there of some sort. Kenny was well up the inside, and for whatever reason, the car's just turned hard left. Oh, my goodness. And Banks would have seen him come into the mirrors, but a failure with that car right across the front of the 78s. Let's watch the rear of the car. Blue car at the back of the shot, the Lola. It did look like, look like something collapsed in the left rear. Just there. Rear wing gone. Yeah. And absolutely no downforce from that point and into the wall goes ken smith both drivers have jumped out of the car their cars i should say and the red flag has come out here on lap number two yeah, so these cars actually have uh, they don't have a huge amount of downforce but a lot over the rear of the car and obviously that ring wing once it collapsed um, just completely uh, unloaded the rear of the car Slow-mo, it's going to really exaggerate the, the size of the impact here. Just a passenger from that point. Oh, look, look at the head. head. Left rear of the car went across the top of the cockpit of David Banks. Number 78 car at the same time. And cameraman down there, Gerald, has captured some Magnificent shots this weekend. A little spring bouncing down the road. Ken Smith off into the gravel trap here. And that's why the red flag has come out in this second lap. He did make some contact at the start of the race while he was charging through the field. As this race is under red flag, let's go down to pit lane and say good morning to Cameron Van and Dungan. Yeah, thanks, guys. I've got Tom Alexander, who was driving this car just the other day. Um, some pretty big scenes. Great to see Ken out of the car, though. Yeah, very scary. You know, you never like to see in these cars to, to, to see that. You know, they're not the safest cars around. Um, yeah, not sure clear what happened, but um, just like the rear wings um, come off. They had very high speed into Turn 1, and after then, Ken's just a passenger. Unfortunately, Cody's been caught up as well, and you, you never like to see that, especially in, uh, in, in these old cars, into Turn 1 as well. Yeah, so talk to us through these cars. I mean, you've had a driver of this one before. It's, a, it's another gentleman's car who, who owns that one that Ken's driving. Um, what makes them so dangerous from your point of view? Uh, just there was no safety back in those days, you know. They, they, they were built to be light and fast. Um, aluminium tubs only, you know, 30 centimetres high. You know, that, that's the only thing that's sitting there. It's, it's between two fuel tanks. So when you see scenes like that, um, until you know the drivers are safe, that, it, it really scares you. Well, Ken Smith, though, as well, a very experienced driver. We saw him carving up the field before that moment. This, this car's a beautiful bit of kit, though, isn't it? Oh, it, it's beautiful. You know, it's built um, by a guy, Barry Miller, that's worked on Kenny's car as well, and it's, it's better than brand new. Um, incredible car. Um, yeah, Kenny was obviously trying to push through. Um, unfortunately, he had to start from the rear because he didn't qualify. Makes it tricky with, um, with the speed difference between the front and the rear um, in this field. So, um, But it looks like it's just mechanical failures is, is, is what's caused it in the end. Thanks for having a chat to us, Tom. And as we said before, it's good to see Ken out of the car. Yeah, exactly. That's the main thing. Thank you, Cam. Tom Alexander down in the pits. This race stays on the red flag. It's Cody Banks. We should update on that, too. They did a last-minute driver swap in the lead-up today. It's his dad's car, David Banks. It's one written down the side of the 78, the Talon car. And there it is on the back of the tilt tray. Goes back to our point before how quick this track is. The wing failure on the back of that Lola. As we look at it one more time, last car in this shot. Looking to make the pass, rear wing collapses, takes all the arrow from the car and across the top of the bank's entry and into the wall on the left-hand side. 
obviously a high speed there to the amount of force down through that ring, rear ring is, is probably the highest uh, point on the track. And the wall's curved, isn't it? It's not like it's gone straight in head first. It's a curved corner, but it's still going to be a hard hit. This is from the GJ Gardner Holmes turn. It's a car. All the damage is done by this point. The left front and the left rear is already rolling down into the, sa the sand trap at turn number one. But this is the shot, isn't it? Oh. That's a huge impact. So glad to see uh, both drivers hop out of the cars. That won't deter him, though. He'll get out. He'll have a think about things, but with 60 years' experience, he'll use some words, some choice words about it all, but I'm sure he'll fight back and race again. Not in his usual car, but still, the chassis is really, really fond of the Lola T332. He's been mentoring Tom Alexander, who's in the Toyota 86 racing series as well. A whole list of achievements that go right back to the 50s. He got to race in the, you know, the glory days, the golden era, as he liked to call it, of New Zealand motorsport, racing against the late Bruce McLaren and Chris Amon. Have you seen the McLaren movie? Oh, I have, yeah, I love, love it. Fantastic love it. documentary. Every Kiwi needs to. Yes, exactly. <laughs> He's been helping out some of the big names over here. Successful drivers that have come out of New Zealand. Including Scott Dixon, former Indy 500 winner as well. The Hartleys, who were great over here. There's Brendan running with the Toro Rosso team in Formula One now. Yeah, Kenny's nearly got, uh, got a connection with every young Kiwi driver at the end of the day. He's, uh, he's such a generous bloke as well. He, he tries to help out wherever he can. So the red flag is continuing to wave out the front of our commentary position here at Pukekohe Park Raceway, and there's the remains of the Lola. What would Tom be thinking right now? I mean, he could have been in that car himself. I mean, no one wants to see damaged race cars. You ever cringe that moment going, well, mechanical failure, you really are in the lap of the gods here. You are, you know, it's, it's part, part of the sport, unfortunately, but um, probably more so in these, in these older cars, although they're maintained and prepared to prepared amazingly um, it's always possible for something like that to happen and um, you know first things first is the, the drivers are okay that's uh, that's the, everyone's main concern and then um, obviously the uh, the uh, the crew and the car owners will be devastated to see those cars damaged like that and just hope that uh, that the tubs are okay and and it, it's more superficial stuff like suspension and bodywork and um, other things that can be repaired uh, slightly easier but in saying that there was a massive hit and, uh, and, and I unfortunately say that probably has hurt the tub to some degree. You get an opportunity today to have a drive of the Super Formula 5000 car, the new generation cars that are going to debut with us in the next couple of years. Looking forward to that? I certainly am. I certainly am. <laughs> Silly question, I, uh, right? Yeah. I haven't driven a single-seater for quite a long time now. The last single-seater I drove would have been in the Toyota Racing Series back in 2005, so not quite as much power as what the... Uh, the uh, Super Formula 5000 car will have. What on a pass. tough series over here, isn't it, Toyota Racing Series? Certainly is. The uh, season I did, 2005, was the first year of the uh, category running here in New Zealand, and um, you know, we've seen a lot of drivers come through the series since that time. Going back into the pits, hoping for a restart here soon. With safety car restart, perhaps. A few of the drivers just clearing. Chaz Mostert and Ryan Storey, who are in the left-hand side of that shot, having a quiet coffee before a race car come in and greeted them. So the red flag is still out here while we clean up the incident down at turn number one. Both cars are now being taken back into the pit paddock area. We look at car 27 of Collins, who was leading the race to that point. The nine of Carl Zoss. We saw this car come out late in practice and qualifying on Friday. Beautiful machinery, as is. I just love the way they've kept these cars preserved in their... States have gone through numerous restorations over the years. A lot of cars have spent a lot of time in Europe and particularly in the United States in Can-Am trim over the years. We saw them race in Australia at the Phillip Island Historic Racing over there. We saw them at the Grand Prix in Melbourne. A big field of cars raced around the Albert Park circuit years ago. Let's go back and have a look at the start. From an onboard perspective, I love rolling starts, but that's my speedway background, I guess. Heading down into turn number one. Was it really? Brett actually looked like he got a really good run onto the front straight there, but had to roll off it. Couldn't go anywhere with it, unfortunately, as he tries to just slot into position here. Take it nice and easy on the first lap. When do you know is the right time 
on Cole Tyson? Is it you just feel it's time to go? Or? Yeah, exactly. You just try and build. You're feeling the limited grip the whole the whole time. And, uh, yeah, initially you know that it's not quite there, but at the same time you're chasing that grip level. You're pushing as hard as you can, and you can uh, you just naturally uh, progress in speed. So um, the harder you can push, it's a bit of a challenging thing because if you go... Obviously, uh, soft when the tyres are cold, they don't generate temp as fast. So you want to try and push as hard as you can, um, even when the tyres are cold, to help compound that uh, temperature building in the tyre. That was Ken Smith going down the inside and, and the outside of a car going into turn number one before the incident happened on the second lap. But it's a very special art that not many drivers can actually do, can they, to get the tyres up to temp and have the what we call cold tyre confidence. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You see in the supercars, lots of guys have different uh, uh, techniques, different approaches to how they generate the tyre tip. Obviously really crucial, especially in qualifying, um, but then into the races too. You can, uh, it can really make or break your race. If you come out of the pits and it takes you an extra half a lap to, to get those tyres to come on, um, that can be the difference between uh, dropping positions or not. So it's a real challenge and, and, and it's a challenge just to be able to push that hard when the tyre's cold. Um, you know, as a co-driver in those, uh, in those endurance races this year, that was something I had to really focus on, getting out of the gate and getting into it straight away. Unlike the other categories, these cars feel every bump. There's been resurfaced in sections here at Pukekohe Park. These cars feel every bump and some that have just been created. It's an amazing shot, that. You can see the, uh, the drive shaft shock working. And this incident happening ahead, just smoke and dust and debris from the Ken Smith and Cody Banks incident on the left-hand side. It's from David Banks looking across going, that's my car on the left-hand side in the hands of his son. So the red is out. We're hoping for a safety car restart. The car's come back to life soon. That car we were just riding on board with then was run by the great Kevin Bartlett back in Australia in the days and runs in the magnum colours that the great Johnny Walker drove to the win in the 79 Australian Grand Prix along with the Australian Drivers' Championship in the day. Out comes Carl Soss in car number nine. All that hard work that the guys did throughout that uh, opening couple of laps to generate tyre temperature has just been lost. Obviously, they're sitting on the grid now. Those tyres are going to cool off and they're going to have to try and uh, work hard to build that tyre temperature up on this formation lap. The cars are back to life. Now, officials, volunteers, staff, of which there's hundreds of people here that make the ITM Auckland Super Sprint what it is. But a busy day ahead as the cars go back to life. It's a beautiful McLaren that just went through the shot with a big high wing. There it is. Coming into turn number one right now. So the safety car is back out on the circuit. We should get some racing laps in. The guys now on this uh, on this formation lap, you'll see them down the back straight here, really working uh, those tyres, trying to build that tyre temperature. Right, guys, I've got great news for fans. Ken Smith, here you are with me, cleared from the medical centre, mate. That was a very, uh, very big uh, moment. Yeah, it felt like it too, but um, it sort of all happened. So, but according to Tom was looking at it, he thinks the rear wing broke on it turning in there. Yeah, we can tell you from the footage it was definitely the rear wing. At that point, you're just a passenger. The car just spat sideways on you. I was leered level with him, and I, I knew he knew I was there, so I thought I'll stay tight because of the way it went, you know. That's what I will say about starting off the back of a grid when you're a lot quicker than some of the other guys. I, I've got to convince this stupid Formula 5000 Association that should be selected where you can start than start away back with someone that's a long way away. I mean, it's not his fault. He was going all right, but it's always the problem when you're in a hurry to pass someone. But because the wing broke, I suppose, it didn't matter what I was going to do. It was going to break somewhere, wasn't it? Oh, well, it was indeed. And the guys, an insight to Ken Smith, he turned around and was already looking for a spare car. Mate, I, I think you can you can actually just go and have a breather if you want. Yeah, no, we'll be right. We'll go jump or something, what do you reckon? <laughs> Thanks, Ken. <laughs> it's the Aussie <laughs> Formula 5000. I've got to go and soon. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I don't think All he right, knows thanks. how to rest. Ken Smith, thanks to Cameron Van and Duncan back in the pits. I knew he had some choice words to go back to racing here in the SAS Auto Parts Formula 5000 here at Pukekohe Park. That was Clark Proctor off the start. Got a good run off the hill there and uh, threw it up the inside to turn one. He was attacking from the word go. Well done easy, didn't he? Down towards turn number one. Some overcast conditions on the back straight here at Pukekohe Park. These drivers battle to get these Avon tyres back up to temperature. The durability of these 
tyres. Some of the teams saying on Thursday they get pretty much a full season, unless you do something silly like lock the brakes up repeatedly. A very durable tyre. They match what the tyres were back in the 70s, same width. It's that beautiful McLaren going through the shot once again of Tony Roberts. He down to the Husqvarna hairpin. It's a big move from Proctor at the restart, puts himself up into the lead. A car that spent the better part of two decades in storage in the 90s before it was restored and run in a series in the United States. Now Clark's been racing for about four or five seasons now. Now, I've worked on that car a lot. I remember seeing Clark in that car at Hampton Downs a few years back now. I think it was one of the first times he drove it. And I've definitely put a lot of effort into that car in the last few years. Basically, uh, we, we touched on that, 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 that formation lap, working the tyres, working the building as much temp as possible. When it paid off for him, he, uh, he had confidence at that restart. And, uh, and, and that's what made the difference in the end. Uh, the sort of relatively similar speed here now. Interesting to see if uh, if Michael Collins can fight back. Let's have a listen to this car on the acceleration out of the corner. Extremely bumpy there, up over the hill and down the front straight. When you see an onboard like that, you can see the suspension moving. It really highlights uh, the track isn't smooth now. <laughs> it's really still got its character. It's great to see it. and these cars, you know, kind of highlights. Suddenly, dark clouds across the top of this once again. The Book and Coey Park Raceway will be one lap to go. And we go next time. Darren Burson behind him locks up the front right in the Talon MR1. Heading down to turn number five. It's Proctor, it's a one and a half second lead. He sweeps on through. To start the last lap, they'll have another race this afternoon. Unfortunately, we didn't get that first race in yesterday. Been really excited about seeing this category since we arrived here on Thursday. Some of these cars will be packed up and shipped off to Laguna Seca. Their friends, MSC. Mediterranean shipping company that have been helping them out for many years to race their 50 year anniversary. That's a track you'd love to race around. That would be unbelievable, especially one of these cars. Across the top of the corkscrew, that would be different. So, final lap. It was Aaron Burson running back in sixth position behind Glenn Richards and Frank Willis, who spent some time riding on board with defending champion in the SAS Auto Parts Formula 5000s. Actually, it looks like Michael Collins making a real push here on this final lap. He's really closed the gap up considerably. Clark's gone slightly defensively uh, into that here, but quite shallow. Sweeps on through. The final turn to the 59-year-old. He was originally from Wellington. Now calls Auckland home. will pick up the win in the second race of the championship this year in the SAS Auto Parts. Or is he right at the finish line? He gets it by seven hundredths of a second. Collins made a real push at the end here, and I doubt <laughs> if he even knew it was the last lap. There's no, <laughs> no radio communication in these, uh, in these old girls, so. 0 .0700, 0. and Collins spins down at the GJ Gardner Holmes turn and wipes out any heat in those rear Avon tyres. Seven hundredths of a second at the finish line. Here it is again. Great finish. You picked it at the final corner. This is on the cool down lap. The way down into TJ Gunner just got up on the curb. They're still slippery. And around went car 27. He missed out on the victory by seven hundredths of a second. In the SAS Auto Parts. Unfortunately, the red flag came out early for a big incident. We've got six laps in the books. And well done to Clark Proctor. The narrowest victory you'll see of the weekend. Collins in second, Higgins in third, back to Richards in fifth, Aaron Burson, Tony Roberts down in eighth, and Frank Carl completing the top ten. He was 43 seconds down, even after that two-lap sprint.
through the Formula 5000s. Another race still to come here this afternoon.